Hello everybody and welcome to Hearthstone Champions League. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Raven and we're going to bring you the Life Coach versus Strife Crow match. We're jumping straight into the action. Yeah, so game one we've got uh, Strife Crow on what looks to be potentially Reno Luck and um, Life, Life Coach on the other side with Rogue. And Life Coach has been streaming a lot of Rogue recently. So I imagine this is his variant which does contain uh, the double gadgets and but we'll see as the game goes on of course. Absolutely. So, uh, what do you think about the matchup, Rogue versus uh, Reno Lock? We talked about it, uh, I think, on day one, or day two even, when Pavel was playing, uh, where Rogue might have some trouble if he doesn't have enough burst. Yeah, you pretty much, or at least I feel as, as Rogue, you need to set up the board and set up potential burst uh, so that when Reno is played, because you have to sort of you know, presume the Warlock will have it. So when it's played, you can then present so much burst that playing it isn't too much of a problem for you. Um, it's funny to just see both players here completely wait, wait until the end of Mulligan phase um, and then see what's going to happen. So there's Drive Coast cards going. Okay, cool. So um, I think the Rogue keeping a lot of, or trying to draw a lot of cards is going to be very important. Whether Live Coach can get a sprint early on. It's going to be key to him winning this because he definitely needs the options versus the Reno luck. Absolutely. And you know, like watching Strife Crew and Life Coach, I always come back to this match at Viking House Cup 3 and, and Transylvania when they faced each other in the final uh, of the tournament. And then Life Coach won versus Strife Crew. I think they faced each other uh, once again, but uh, it's always great to see uh, one of the best European players versus one of the, the best US players. But then we haven't seen Strife Crew lately. Yeah, I've not seen him in too many tournaments, and uh, that's a shame, really, because he's definitely, uh, you know, as you said, one of the best uh, American players uh, uh, that we're aware of anyway. And it's always good just to see, like, the two sort of powerhouses like this. And, you know, both are very, you know, like, very much known for taking their time, you know, being quite, uh, you know, using quite just slow and steady approach to the game in terms of, like, the sort of grindy approach there. And Live Coach, known for his roping, of course. And uh, oh, he will take all the time in the world when his option is either prep or hero power, or both. So. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just laughing a bit because uh, they both have great minds, and uh, what they do, they, they vocalize what they are thinking about. So it seems like they are talking to each other. Well, in fact, they are talking to themselves, just, just vocalizing what they have in mind and going for those options. So we'll see both of the, uh, both of them actually talking during the match, <laughs> even though nobody is listening. It's really uh, interesting to watch the way different players approach the game. And uh, even like something Life Coach's stream where something that I've not seen too many other streamers do is he'll literally play a turn or a game and anything he thinks was sort of interesting about it, you'll have screenshotted. Then he sits and goes through the screenshot with chat <laughs> and try and work out what was going on and why and what the best play was. So a very, uh, very intense stream, but a very good one. And, so far, this game's going pretty slow. I mean, uh, we just dropped the chow. Strivecoat's just got into a tap. You know, typical Reno luck openings. And again, with the Thoris and Bran, you know, kind of expecting it is Reno and not had luck. What about Molly Lock? Because also... Yeah, there's nothing that we've seen that... As... Does Molly Lock run PO? Hmm. You normally no, you don't. You normally do not run PO and Mali Lock. So I think like the the PO might actually give it away as a Reno Lock. But but still, this is an amazing um, end from Strife Crow where you have the Bran into a possible Twilight, um, w which will uh, just double its health. Then the Torison, uh, not hitting many things, but it's still a good body on board. So you should be able to pressure your opponent. And uh, Life Coach deciding to go for the backstab um, weapon attack and refresh weapon. Yeah, it'd be interesting. He can drop the SI, but what's good for Strive Crow is he has the Dart Bomb, so one of the key cards in this matchup, purely because it kills SI7 Agent. So um, I imagine we'll see SI this turn. I think it's too too good to pass up to just remove the 3-3. Three, three. And uh, whether he, he probably... Because just Dart Bomb feels bad, so he might actually just coin into tap if he really feels like he wants the cards, or he might try and hold on to coin play the Drake next turn and coin into Thoris and then just hope he's drawn into, you know, good enough cards by then. Yeah, I absolutely agree. You, you, you cannot really drop Bran here because it will just die. So, um, coin into Twilight Drake, how good, how good is it? The only thing you're worried about there in, in terms of committing to the coin at least is that uh, Sap's a bit of a problem and you're also just leaving the 3-3 three, three up. So if you get like, you know, Sap and then just pile on more pressure, um, that could be an issue. 
Um, hmm. I mean, it's okay, though, because if you get sapped, you replay it on turn 4, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, it's not too terrible. Pressuring. And Sab is taking 2 mana from Rogue, so Rogue will not have um, a lot to do on that same turn. Yeah, and this solves the issue of, as I was saying a little bit earlier, where, like, just Dark Bomb on turn 3 just doesn't feel great at all, um, even though it does remove the minion. So we'll see how this pans out. Uh, we can see Life Coach doesn't have the sap. Uh, doesn't really have too many options beyond Tomb Pillager this turn. Yeah, he cannot kill the Drake. He only has six damage, as far as I can see. And that backstab yeah. can be really good with Azure Drake next turn. So uh, going for Tomb Pillager is probably the play. And uh, and then just uh, going for face, Keeping the weapon, possibly. Uh, you're not going to refresh the weapon next turn, so why not keep it? But then Life Coach is obviously thinking about the grand plan of the game. Like, what is he going to do on 5, on 6? What's the follow-up? What can Renal Lock play? What are the biggest threats? Yeah, that's definitely um, the way Life Coach plays this. You know, always, you know, five turns ahead in terms of what he wants to do and accomplish uh, for, for each of those turns. And this is definitely going to be awkward, though, because if the Drake goes into the 5-4, it starts 2 health, which makes it, and it's not backstabbable, so it makes it, um, you know, still a little bit awkward for Life Coach to deal with. And that's probably the play, uh, because if you attack into the 5-4, uh, you can still tap and kill the free free with the Dark Bomb. But is there anything else? Like, this deck is really complicated, uh, most, mostly because there's uh, there are one-offs. So when you decide to use the card, you will not have a second copy in your deck. So I can safely assume that this Dark Bomb is the only Dark Bomb in the deck. Yeah, and I think it's what a lot of players like about Rena Lock specifically, is that you have so many options because you're running 30 separate cards a lot of the time. So you have so many different options and ways to, you know, play each turn or, you know, each game with all the turns. So it's a really fun deck to play in Life Coach. It's just, go uh, sorry, Stride Crow is just going for the tap, uh, the dart bomb there to clear up the board. And as he said, it's a little bit awkward for Life Coach to deal with this 4-2. He has drawn into Deadly Poison, but, you know, like Dagger Up, Redagger, Deadly Poison, Kill just feels too slow. Well, he can always play a minion coin Deadly and uh, and kill it with a uh, with weapon, but then you're spending Deadly Poison on that specific uh, for two, and you lose the weapon as well. Uh, that might be worthwhile, though. If you go for Azure Jake, it will be uncontested after that, and you draw a card as well. Yeah, that's true, because as we can see now, like both players are definitely just going for the tempo. Neither of them are particularly trying to, you know, rush each other down or, you know, anything like that. They're very much tempo-based, this matchup, until uh, one of them gets the opportunity for some burst. And Strifecrow might well be running the, uh, you know, some form of combo, like we saw uh, Pavel run on yeah. Tuesday. With Arkin Golem or maybe Leroy, um, Faceless, yeah. possibly. Okay, so Life Coach decides to go for a simple uh, Belcher that's going to stop uh, the 4-2. He values the coin more. Uh, which makes sense. We don't exactly know what he has in the deck. He can have Gadgetson, uh, or he might be looking for a big Violet Teacher play. So spells are always good for, for the Rogue, if you can deal with a 4-2. But uh, this enables Strike Fruit to actually use uh, Moral Coil. Yeah, then the coin's really important because it also just directly enables combo. Like, no matter what you want to play, it just creates a combo. And Strike Crow got a bit of an awkward follow-up. He can play Bran, but the you know like the odds on the rogue being able to answer this are pretty high, but it's obviously better than playing nothing. So just playing Brand again, just to try and put you know put something on the board to cr create uh, some pressure. But now there's a lot of options from Life Coach. Actually, he can Violet Teacher, backstab, weapon up if he wants to. Um, he can just Drake backstab trade the one two. Or Drake backstab attack with the weapon. Yeah, true. Yeah, that actually be better. Yeah, so a lot of yeah. options for Life Coach, but um, whatever option he chooses, Strife Coach still has answers in his deck, and uh, he can play a slow game. And ne next turn, he can even just drop Thorison. So for Life Coach, what do you think is the best play? So if you play Azure Drake, you draw a card, so you advance your game plan more or less, and you create a board where you will have a 4 4 and a 1 2, so you might w try to bait out removal a bit, like something like a Hellfire Coil. Uh, I don't think about that that Shadow Flame will be played, but um, you bait out option. You, you get more options to the draw, and you bait a removal uh, before the Violet Tisha uh, Violet Tisha is actually played. Yeah, I like this because also um, this is one of the better backstab targets in the deck. Um, you know, it's such a clean kill because 
Rina Lock normally plays a lot of quite big minions, so backstab is just, you know, two, but then I've got to do an extra four, five, or six or something to kill it off the board. Uh, whereas this is pretty clean. Uh, it gets that one charge off the weapon out of the way as well, um, so you can work on refreshing it next turn and getting the two charges with the potential deadly poison. So I like that play a lot, and now, uh, now it's over to Strive Crow to uh, sit and have a little think about what he wants to do is, with the addition of Dark Peddler into his hand, he does have a few more options now. The scary part for Strife Crow is that he already has to think about possible lethal. Like, can Life Coach have the Gold Hand, which will be Blagger up into Preparation, Oil, Deadly Poison, Flurry. That should be enough to finish the game. Uh, but he, yes. he just has to decide on the best play anyway. Yeah, it's definitely rough because, you know, if those five cards, because he knows one is the coin, and um, if those five cards are, you know, like as you said, like some sort of ruthless combo like that, yeah, even maybe with evasives or something, then definitely in some scary water there. But Strive Co actually is going for the Thorison because unless there is lethal from 20 health for the rogue, then Thorison effectively has hyperton and has to get killed or dealt with in some way. Absolutely. Um, all the while still reducing Strive Co's hand down. So what's pretty key as well, getting two of those cards at zero mana. So the two buff cards, so abusive and the power overwhelming. Zero mana spells and cards are pretty good in general. <laughs> like being able to just drop them no matter what you want to do with your turn is pretty powerful. They are pretty good, but Strife is facing a really huge problem here. Um, actually, two problems. The first one is that the Rogue has uh, Tempo and Minions on board. And the other is he doesn't have any heal in hand. He only has Slash Belcher as a possible taunt, but then no healing possibility. So if Life Coach decides to to make another tempo play, even sub Torison and, and go face, deal as much damage as possible, then uh, he might position himself really well. Yeah, I mean, he did it, definitely had the option. I think the only problem with going aggressive versus Reno is as much as we can see Strive Code doesn't have Reno, he could have it. And if a Reno board clear then comes down, then, you know, you're so far behind because as the game goes on, the Reno lock is normally, well, one able to draw two cards a turn effectively. Um, and then also dropping, like, just in general, bigger minions than you are. So you start to just lose out on that tempo. So I've got to just go for the trade uh, to remove Thorison off the board. Holding on to this sap, which will be important, so he can pretty much deal with whatever comes out next to try and challenge this teacher. Yeah, I think I like it. Like, you, you really want to deal with Thorison. And Shrivko gets pilot to Shredder. So on this turn, how can he deal with the teacher? Or does he even have to? Uh, deal with the t-shirt. He can obviously AoE twice, but that's that's not even a play. Uh, so maybe trying to find a better answer with Dark, Dark Peddler. And then um, Slum Belcher. Yeah, I think this is pretty reasonable. Um, for some reason we can't see the Peddler cards, which is weird. Um, but yeah, like this is fine. Like If you're going to AoE, you, you wait till the, uh, the Violet Teacher's created the minions first. It's not like the one ones have charge. So you can wait one turn, let him build up a board, then the AoE becomes more valuable. Yeah, that's right. Uh, getting a Dragon Egg, which is not great, but uh, we're playing versus Rogue, so something like a fan of Knives can be awkward suddenly, or, or Flurry for one mana. I can also spawn a couple of, uh, of Whelps. But uh, for Life Coach, he didn't pick up Lethal. And uh, he always ha has to mind a possible AoE. So he might still go into minion trading and try to outvalue the Reno lock. Yeah, I think it's, it is one of the ways uh, a lot of decks do beat Reno is by having such a powerful board that even if they drop Reno, their follow-up, because Reno costs six mana, their follow-up isn't normally too powerful. So then your board's so big that you pressure them back down to near the health they were at anyway. Um, the good thing for the egg in Strive Crow's, uh, or on Strive Crow's board is that it's a target that's probably going to get left alone, that he can use Power of Worm and an Abusive Sergeant on, as if it was sort of like a Nerubian egg. I mean, obviously, the thing that comes out of it's a lot smaller, but it's nice to have a token that can actually just yeah, eat a buff that you're not too bothered about dying. Yeah, that's for sure. So how many things you can play on board not overextend to something like Twisting Nether, which will be available next turn? Yeah, I think this is okay because although it looks like the board's quite full and heavy, realistically there is only really the teacher and the Van Cleef. Because the Van Cleef, the tokens don't really matter too much. And that is only two minions and Live Coach has got the follow-up of Toon Pillage as well. The only worrying thing now is like Live Coach just really wants to sprint. He has prep sprint and the coin and another coin from when Pillager dies. 
So he's got so much like way to get value from his cards. He just doesn't have any cards to get value from at the moment. I'm just looking what's the best play here because there is a couple of interesting ones. Uh, you can go abusive big game hunter on Edwin. That's one of the things that will uh, take two mana. You have six more. And uh, I would like to play Belcher if possible, and maybe even squeeze in uh, Demon Wrath, but there is not enough mana to do that. So maybe um, Demon Wrath anyway to deal with the tokens, and then uh, still abusive Big Game Hunter, and maybe slam Pilot the Shredder. What, what about just Demon Wrath Hellfire, AGH, and abusive? Play the board and leave the 4 2 on there? I would probably like to have a second AoE, but uh, Strifecrew decides that uh, it's better to, to, to use both. Uh, which is also fine. I mean, he's developing a, a good board after this, clean, clearing all the minions. And when you play versus Rogue, and you're at 16 health, you do want to clear all the minions because of uh, oils. And, and yeah, and else. I think the idea as well is he knows one card has been in the life coach's hand for a long time, and then the other card is the coin. Yeah. So he's probably thinking he's just seen a teacher and a nice you know little combo from life coach to fill the board a little bit. So it's like, does he really have like? Can he drop like three more minions on the board to warrant an AOE? Probably not with that, you know, that low hand because he knows two of the cards are probably not minions because he can tell one's the coin and then one's probably something like prep, maybe like a fan of knives or something like that that hasn't really, you know, had a requirement to be used at this point in the game. Also interesting fact is Strifecrow has that ooze and he hasn't used it last turn. Uh, apparently there was not enough space if you, if you want to clear everything. But for this turn, he can kill the belcher with the po and then slam his own belcher but then it's not it's not great so maybe just playing belcher and shredder yeah it's a real tough one actually isn't it because if you play belcher and shredder the belcher just straight up dies but i suppose it means the shredder then straight up kills the uh, sludge belcher because the sludge belcher would kill the sludge from the belcher you'd imagine um but this is this is okay as well is he just gonna yeah, this is nice. This is fine. Yeah, this is a really um, strong turn. Yeah, because if you tried to just uh, slam it and leave it, it would probably be a little bit awkward. And here's the gadget that the life coach has desperately been waiting for. Oh, um, man. He kept that coin specifically for that. Oh, well, that's actually the coin from Pillager, but the preparation. Yeah. And can he preparation into Fun of Knives? Oh, he got eviscerate. This is is this is okay. At least it's a spell. I think you do drop the Thanos, right? Yeah, because you can evist and then still find it nice. Absolutely. That's a, a miracle turn. So miracle rogue is back confirmed. Can we get another spell? Yes. Please. Oh, wow. Of knives. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this this is taking me back what two years? Yeah. To, to the old uh, the old rogue times. Two thousand fourteen. Oh my confirmed. god. And they draws it. Uh, oh okay. I no thought prep. it was going to be like a second. Um, Stop prep. A second Stop. prep. <laughs> Into Leroy, cold blood, cold blood. Well, to be step. honest, he ha still had an opportunity to get a coin. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, ooh. no, you can't get a coin and hope for a prep, right? Okay, coin into prep into. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, this trade is nice because it gives him the height. Okay, it just leaves the three. Did Life Coach attack with the 5 4 then? Did I just miss that? Yeah, yeah. With 5 4. He did attack. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he did attack. Yeah, sorry. Um, this is really nice. It Killing off the Shredder just makes sure that nothing too crazy is going to happen and, like, you know, the minion's just smaller. Because when you have 14 health, you do have to think, right, okay, if I can either leave the 4 attack minion up or I can potentially give him, like, a 1 1 which is a big difference when you're on 14. So, decent play from Life Coach there. And he actually outvalued the, the Reno lock. Strife Crew is just sitting there. He can tap for something like Reno, but uh, he needs he, he doesn't have a kill, even with Arcan Golem, and uh, he can't clear this board. Like, he can't even kill both minions. Like, he can Arcan Golem into Gadgetson, which is key. Shadow <laughs> Flame! Wow! That's big. So, do you... You don't have to seriously buy up Arcane Golem hit face Shadow Flame just to clear the board. Yeah. Because <laughs> this yeah, seems absolutely. really good. Uh, it keeps the 3 2 alive, and the extra mana crystal does nothing because they're both on 10 mana anyway. So, you know, like that actually is just a 4 2 charge. And that AoE, pretty big. Life Coach is still looking okay, uh, mainly because of that Fan of Knives allows him to get an additional card draw, which is probably going to be really important at this point in the match. So, do you sli you still slam Torison, right? You I think you fan of knives first. If you fan of knives, would you attack into the the free two? So you've seen you've seen Arcane Golem. 
you've seen Dark Bomb, you've seen Hellfire, you've seen a lot of damage dealing yeah. cards. Can you actually afford uh, attacking with the weapon into the the Murloc? Because you have enough mana, right? Like you have five eleven, so you can coin the the weapon. Yeah, well, I think he can. Um, he could actually. Hmm, I was waiting on whether he actually just evisses the three two and just fan of knives for card draw anyway. But you fan of knives, see what what card you draw. And then potentially invest the three two, leave Emperor on the board, and then you, you're representing a five five, uh, um, and your opponent's board is empty. I would not be opposed to like even attacking it with the weapon. Uh, depends on, obviously on what you draw with front of knives. Yeah. Purely because then you've got attack blade flurry next turn as well as potential Emperor. All right, he goes. Was he going to keep the fan? No fan, I guess. Okay, I like this just because it says. You know, it's really, really safe. Like, as we said earlier, with the Arcane Golem gone, there's not a lot of cards from the Warlock. Uh, Defender of Argus, though, is <laughs> definitely a card. And you know what? What's a bit scary about this matchup, what we're forgetting, is yeah. we've not seen Reno yet. Yeah, Reno could go. If Reno came down, it's like, oh, sorry, what health were you on? You know, like, it just doesn't matter anymore. And we talked about it in the, in the very beginning of this game that Rogue has only a certain amount of burst. It's kind of like playing versus Warrior. And if Rogue cannot burst you, a Rogue should not be able to win. Uh, we are seeing something different here. Like Life Coach was playing a value game. And Life Coach is one of those players that can show you a different style of Hearthstone. Like sometimes you think about the matchup in a certain way. And then Life Coach comes and he play, play, plays it backwards. And it, and it works. Yeah, it's uh, very strange. And <laughs> it, it's, it's just Sylvanas Argus. Just the best you're going to get here. Uh, you're not dead to sap. Basically, there is uh, only six damage, seven damage with the flurry. Well, Strife Crew doesn't know there is a flurry, but even without the flurry, it's just six damage. So you feel good about it. Uh, there is a sap, but he's still not dead. And Life Coach needs to pick up uh, one more damage point, which shouldn't be that difficult. Um, it provide. doesn't sound. Yeah, he is a he is a rogue. So it's SI deadly um, oil. Yep, oh. that's it. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, pretty big for Life Coach. As I was just going to say, in this deck specifically, I don't actually think he runs oils because this is his, uh, the Double Gadgets and variant. It's like Double Gadgets and uh, Violet Teacher to Impillager. So really good for Life Coach there, getting the SI7 agent. How close was that game oh, one? Man. There could have been Reno at any time, at any time. Unless Strife could actually cut Reno from the deck, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing one of luck. <laughs> like, I can't call it Reno luck anymore because I actually cut that card. I didn't think it was good enough. Um, but yeah, and this is, you know, like, this is the downside of playing a Reno deck is that when you are quite heavily reliant on Reno, you're winning you certain matchups. Uh, and you don't draw that card, you can lose pretty hard. Because what's crazy as well, we didn't see Earthen Ring Farseer, we didn't see Healbot, did we? No, so we saw no, like we zero don't... healing from Strife Crow, which we don't know what cards are in his deck, of course, but that actually just sounds quite unfortunate because uh, you at least expect Reno and a Healbot, right? Well, I believe he has to play one Healbot at least. When, when you play Brown Bronze Brew, you cannot uh, not play. Um, yeah, it's too good not to, right? Exactly. But uh, I feel like his version was a bit more aggressive um, because he had Sylvanas and, and Thoris and, and Pilot Shredder. Uh, so I, I felt like at least uh, how he played this this matchup, uh, he was really about the aggression and doing damage. Um, because it makes yeah. sense. Like if you have all those fallback cards like Healbots and, and Reno. No, he's just playing the ultimate mind games. Reno's not even in there. He's <laughs> playing one of Warlock. That's the new Strive Crow deck. See it soon on, uh, on Halfbone, no doubt. It's actually <laughs> not that crazy, even, Raven, because I've seen Strive Crow playing <laughs> decks without win conditions. He just was grinding his opponent out. But Oh, uh, I think I'm, I remember casting with Sabitz when Strive Crow was playing his Mage deck that he played at one point a couple yeah. of months back, where it was just the Mage was just like, yeah. I'm just going to play cards that Mage has and hope I don't die. And we just couldn't value. quite work out on the uh, how he planned to win most of those games. But yeah, it didn't fare from too well then. But he is switching over to Druid, which I would imagine, unless he, you know, he's doing a bit of an orange tactic here, it's going to be pretty standard mid-range Druid that everyone, you know, we, we know what that win condition is, let's be honest. We know the win condition, but uh, still, there's a lot of changes to the druid lists. Uh, even though slight, there are uh, there are differences. So some people play double shade, some people play one of one aspirin, double azure drake, one azure drake. Uh, how many ancients of lore do you play? How many living groups do you play? So there are those differences in the decks. And life coach is bringing 
I what I believe is a demon warlock, demon uh, handlock. Yeah, this is really interesting. It sort of harkens back to probably one of the decks life coach was most known for uh, earlier on in Hearthstone was Handlock. Um, he loves that deck. Uh, and Demon Handlock is, again, obviously the, the more improved variant, I guess most people agree. But ever, as everyone switched to Reno, it looks like life coach is still pretty happy with the Demon Lock. Oh, man, I'm just looking at those colors, and they look beautiful. Like Twilight, Drake, Morganis, and uh, Void Color with those different hues, like <laughs> blue, green. It's very, brown. very flat. And then we look down to the druid, and it's like brown. brown. <laughs> yeah, it's basically so brown. sad. <laughs> Not even gold. Come on, Stripe Crow. Although I imagine if he's playing on EU, it isn't his main account. So That's true. We'll, we'll let him off this once. <laughs> and sometimes people actually uh, find the golden cards distracting. I, I don't remember if Stripe Crow is one of those guys, but uh, a lot of players, they disenchant all the golden cards because they just want simple cards without animations to not distract them from, from playing them. I'm the opposite. If anything, I spend too much dust on <laughs> just crafting gold cards. And I then I always so. craft them. And then I will, like, the next day I'll just open a pack and I'll get the golden variants that I crafted. I'm like, God, God damn it. By the way, there is uh, a Void Caller with only Mulganis. And uh, there is a, a risk of Big Game Hunter, but you might actually go for it. And uh, there's also a risk of Keeper of the Grove. So I don't know, but if there is no Keeper, that Void Caller can give you a lot of value. Um, on the other hand, Void Caller... Silenced is a bit better than Twilight Drake Silenced, so I think coin into Void Color is really decent. Uh, on yeah, the I Hellfire. Agree. Yeah, I, I agree actually. I think that um, the uh, the Void Color is just the overall safer play, and um, because it's not going to get killed by a one one on its own. So uh, yeah, completely agree with your analysis there. That was really good play from Live Coach, and at worst, if it gets silenced and then killed, well, one that's you know Strife grabbing to put a lot of juice into killing that three four. But also, it means that the Twilight Drake, you know, is substantially more safe than it would have been this turn. Yeah, and um, even if there is a big hunter, you do have the Hellfire follow up. So whatever happens, you're in a good position overall. As life yeah, coach. He, yeah, and he does have the um, two heal bots as well, which is uh, pretty nice. Just to you know, be able to say yes, you know, late game, I can probably push myself out of you know normal combo range. Yeah, most of the time. But um, let's talk about the matchup overall. Like we, we focus on the cards. Um, the matchup, do you, do you agree? It's um, a bit better for the druid. It's not. It's it's actually close because the demons are so good, and I think it's uh, a bit better uh, than an original handlock without demons. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it is a bit better for the druid here. I think it is close though. Um, obviously, look at Strive Crow now. The night it's pretty nice play to silence the uh, three four and not try and kill it. Um, because that means he guards his shape, uh, and you know nothing. Yeah, and the, the void caller doesn't really kill anything relevant on its own anyway. Although hellfire looks like a reasonable play if you just hellfire and then run in the void caller into two four, reset the board and make that shape do absolutely nothing. Yeah, but still you have to consider other plays if there are any. Um... If you play something like a Twilight Trick, you have minions to fire, but no, you just have to clear this board. Like the the single card that makes the clear this board is Savage Roar. If you make a different play and, for example, go for Defender of Argus, kill it to four, and and be happy with a big taunt, um, then Savage Roar is not that great. But uh, the Shade is a very important card. Like I, I think Shade of Naxxramas versus Handlocks on or Control Warlocks, it if it grows be, beside the, the AOE threshold. It's uh, one of the key cards that can win the game for the Druid. Yeah, I agree. And I think that what you do in this position, why Hellfire looks so good there, was because you not only just kill the Shade, but you kill other minions as well. But also killing the Shade while you can, like you said, because it can do so much damage later, is you have a very small window as the Warlock, unless you can pull off, like, Abusive Sergeant onto your own minion and then Shadow Flame or something to kill it later. Yeah. But by then, Strife Crow's probably already attacked with it. So I think killing that off it, you know, while you can is really nice. And Strife Crow now has a, a choice between realistically Druid of the Claw and or the Shredder. I imagine it's going to be Druid of the Claw just to stay on curve. Yeah, exactly. Because then Shredder and Raph uh, is a possible turn six play. And then on seven, he has either Boom or Ancient of Lore. Uh, for Life Coach, oh, <laughs> Mountain Giant. Um, that might be actually the best card to play here, even though Big Game Hunter will be a, a huge swing. Uh, but even if there is a Big Game Hunter, there's only three mana left. 
So that's Mountain Giant just coming off the top. Uh, always good. Yeah, and the thing with something, say, like Twilight Drake instead there is that, well, yeah, it's okay, but you can't top as well, and it doesn't kill the 4-6. So, you know, just wouldn't have really accomplished enough. So the, the Mountain Giant being really nice there, and again, Life Coach bringing a deck that no one is really that used to playing against anymore. Um, because you just don't expect people to bring it because everyone's sort of either favoring Reno Lock or as we saw in the uh, the previous days, uh, a lot of Zoo Lock as well seems pretty strong at the moment. I would agree that most of the people are not used to playing around this deck um, or against this deck, but Shriveker is one of those guys that probably knows this deck by heart. Uh, he was playing a lot of hand locks at his time, so he knows what to expect. Um, this turn though, you might rough for one, see if you can get the, the big game Hunter, unless you actually want to kill it with uh, Shapeshift. Oh, he goes Ooh. for the one. Sh Shredder and face. Yeah, I think this is good now because he's drawn into swipe and he had Force of Nature as like a an issue. I think he can go face, let the Mountain Giant hit kill the 4-6 and then just swipe it down next turn and still get out the Shredder if need be. So he decided not to go for face because of possible Molten Giant. If he would go for face, then 14, tap into 2 mana, um, Molten into Sunfury Projector was a possibility. That's why he didn't attack at this moment. Uh, he also wants to keep Life Coach on a, on a bigger health pool and not face any Giants for now. Um, yeah, and this fine. is uh, going to be a little bit rough for Strive Crow because, you know, you do have to play around Moltens, but when we can see that Life Coach doesn't even have them in hand, it's just, you know, not, not really a problem for him at the moment. He does have a few other options. I think this is a turn where you can just play the uh, the one of the Twilight Drakes and the uh, Ancient Watcher. I think it's just nice to get that on the board and then look at next turn in terms of an Argus play. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, you definitely attacked into the 4-6 um, to, to kill it and then 4 damage. Uh, you see that Shrive Crow didn't attack, so it's possible that he doesn't have uh, much burst in his hand yet. So he's not going for, for a turn where he can uh, kill everything. Uh, but the nice keeper of the growth from Strife Crow here, uh, which means he will be able to, to clear the board easily. Uh, attack with the 4-3 into the 8-3, keeper the, the Drake and hero power it. Is there anything better though? Mm, I mean, he's one mana off obviously playing keeper and swipe, so I think that's a pretty good play. Uh, he either does that or he decides to go uh, a bit heavier, run the 4-3 into the 8-3. To see what comes out, and then just like just slam Doctor Boom and say, "It's my Boom and Boom Bots versus your Twilight Drake." Let's you know, like let's see, and I'll let you have that card because you can always silence next turn. Um, he's probably got enough of a health build to let that one go, but it doesn't like he's going to favor the board player here. Let's see what comes out of the Shredder. A two three, not too terrible whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, everything that's not a one one, um, you, you will be fine with that. So an uh, an okay uh, turn from Strife Crow and. Uh, with the time going forward, Strife Crow will be in a good position because at some point he is going to draw into Savage War. Um, like even if he doesn't, he still has Force and Swipe. So if he gets uh, an Innervate next turn, uh, he will have access to 10 Surprise Damage out of nowhere. So Life Coach uh, needs to, to think about it, that 16 is not really safe from Druid. Yeah, it's really, and, and nothing he's got in hand feels good. <laughs> it's, it's such an awkward, if he had eight mana, it would feel a little bit better. Um, I mean, like, this, like, heal bot, some Fiori, but with only one some Fiori, I suppose there's two Argus, but they're much harder to squeeze into a turn without Molten Giants. Um, feels really awkward to actually try and deal with. I'm not even really sure what the best play is here. So Maybe you just go Twilight Drake and, uh, and some Fiori and just, you know, hope that's enough for now. I think Watcher Argus is the play because um, you get a big taunt and you use your mana well, and then next turn you'll be able to um, to Sun Fury. But uh, that's fine as well. That's the biggest taunt, and you actually have seen Double Keeper of the Grove already. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you know there's um, not not likely for a Silence to be out. So um, yeah, you've seen those. It's going to soak up a lot of damage, and then it might, if it survives, you know, get buffed again from a Defender of Argus next turn. So back to Strife Crow land. <laughs> he can use the the force of nature. He can use force of nature to clear the four nine with a weapon uh, with a um, hero attack and uh, using one of the minions, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that's not great. Like it doesn't feel good. So maybe it's just time to slam Doctor Boom and pass, or maybe Ancient of Lore. If you if you feel like Doctor Boom 
can die to a big game hunter uh, and that will be too much of a temple swing for you you might actually go for ancient of lore uh, who is barely contested and try to draw faster into that savage roar yes yeah, it's, it's a real tough one isn't it because if you're ancient of lore you it's not like he needs to draw into a bgh or anything yet like a really big swing card and if he does get savage draw then i very much imagine this turn coming up that life coach is gonna you know heavily play around a combo going into turn nine because that's expected i actually like the boom because it represents um one a lot of damage in itself and almost demands a big game hunter and the boom bots, along with the two additional minions, make just Savage Roar a big threat for Life Coach alone. So, you know, he's got to play around a lot. And then Stradko's a pretty good follow up of uh, maybe playing like Lothab Swipe next turn to then just slow down the following turn even more. It's not a big decision for Life Coach to even tap or to try to deal with this board somehow without. Um without tapping and uh, playing the minions. So he definitely has Ancient of War and Defender of Argus if he wants to turn up. He can play Heal Bot uh, if he wants to get uh, a bit higher on health. I think Coil into a 1-1 seems good for it to start. If he Coils into like a big game hunter, then obviously that's insane. Um, and it means he doesn't necessarily reduce his health unless the Boom Bot hits him. Uh, and I think it's pretty safe with his two minions as well. Problem is, if you do that, you um, have a chance to lose the two free. Uh, that's why he played Ancient Watcher first. Yeah. And Ancient Watcher did soak three. The Argus comes down, and he's probably going to start, uh, yeah, just clearing off these bigger minions. And suddenly the board doesn't look too scary. Like, what can Strathcar actually do is he did go into the Savage Roar. Oh, man. So, so now we, so sh we qu quickly need to count uh, if there is any lethal possibility. Um, that's um, nine plus... 4, 13, not yet, depends on the bomb. So you basically combo out, right? And then uh, you attack in, with the bomb into the 5-3, or like rather with the hero power first into the 3-2, then yeah. with two tokens into the 4-7, then with the bomb into the 5-3, and you hope the damage goes to face because you still have a Dr. Boom at 9 and one of the tokens at 4, so you have 13. So if the bomb lands to face for free damage, you win right there, and you don't okay. even take that much damage. Yourself. Yeah, I yeah. Um, I think uh, I think the safer play is probably a little bit more strife crow. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because we I mean, if the bomb could hit for two, then maybe that changes it. But for the bomb to try, have to hit for three, then that you know makes it you know maybe just a bit too difficult to actually uh, try and pull off. Whereas he can low them, feel relatively safe for anything too crazy happening this next turn. Um, and then maybe go for combo off the back of these minions uh, next turn. But I do agree, like, I, I would have struggled not to go for that lethal if I was just, like, on ladder or something, because you just would, right? Right. And you have a you have a minion uh, on board, like, you're still Dr. Boom on board, and then yeah, you have exactly. a swipe in hand. But absolutely, I, I, I like Strife Crow play as well, uh, which is much safer. Uh, still puts Boom in a situation where it, it's on, it is on board, and um, now it's really hard for Life Coach to, to come back from this. Because what's the best play? Like you do have uh, one heal bot that you can play. You can go for Mulganis, but then it can be dealt with uh, easily, and Strife can just win this game. Uh, I'm just actually thinking: is there a way out? Uh, if you silence the um, the Ancient Watcher that you have, attack into Boom, and then you heal bot, you're at 21, and you're still dead, right? So it's seven. Um, but if you silence, can you silence and Defender of Argus somehow to survive? I think, does he almost have to um, Void Caller, Defender Vargas, and then hope the Void Caller gets the Malganics? I guess. To stop. I think that's the only thing that actually stops the, the guaranteed lethal. Because, like, Void Caller Healbot doesn't do anything because you just lethal through, you know, you just power through that with the combo. Uh, you can't play two Healbots. And the silence, you know, is sort of doing the lack of Owl. Well, the Argus sort of does that job in terms of getting the trade. Oh man, Strathcro is going for it, Raven. So if there is a Morganis, he will be uh, a couple of damage off lethal, but if that's Jaraxxus, he has it. Oh man, unless he actually has it even... even. Uh, oh no, he has it regardless, right? Because um, the 7-5 goes into... Oh no, no, he doesn't, no, he doesn't. He would have been a little bit short, okay. I think. All right. But yeah, he did get the Draxus and uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, life coach just a bit of a laugh as he's like, "Yep, you know, 50-50, lost it." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's true.
But another amazing game. Wow, those Warlock games. First, we see Strife Crew with Reno Lock, uh, struggling versus Rogue, and uh, both players present presenting top level of play. And now this Demon versus Druid. And there were so many plays with this cast, but uh, the, the patterns that they chose were um, super good to watch. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a little bit crazy there. And uh, you just see how it's like so similar these two players are. The, the last game we saw Show versus Orange, and they were playing quite fast and maybe, you know, different style decks and, you know, a little bit quick. Whereas, you know, everyone knows Life Coach takes his time. But in terms of Strife Crow as well, like both just very slow and steady players and really, you know, thinking about every single turn they're on now and also the next two to three turns. So pretty cool to see both these guys go up against each other. Absolutely. And just to give you guys a, a short summary, we are watching Hearthstone Champions League. $10,000 prize pool for an online tournament. The winner takes 5000 We are on day three. We started on Monday, we had Group A, Group B on Tuesday. Uh, today we're having the Life Coach Strife Co Orange Show Group. Two of those players will advance and two of those players will be eliminated. And tomorrow, tomorrow we are back with another with Group D uh, and then the top eight playoffs. So a lot of hearts in action. My name is Nimsh, I'm here with Raven and we have an absolute pleasure casting this, this tournament for you. Yeah, it's so crazy and now and now we see the Warlock from Strife Crow. So what we assume is Reno, but we didn't see Reno, um, versus the Demon Lock that we just saw from Life Coach. So I think everyone should get quite comfortable um, because I think this is going to be a, a slow burner in the best of ways. It it can, but then uh, how do you how do you really win this matchup? That's the big question, right? Like somebody has to be a beatdown. Like somebody has to apply enough pressure to win and uh, on one hand life coach has the giants and the demons on the other hand strife crow has the burst he has arcing golem with uh, power overwhelming and uh, we haven't seen him face this manipulator but he has uh well some spells like dark bomb and hellfire yeah i mean because of the arcane golem i can only imagine that he does run the faceless and i think what's going to happen or what you know a generalization of this matchup is that strife crow doesn't actually need to hurt life coach until he has combo. And what that does is that um, plays around life coaches, Molten Giants. Because uh, if you never take him below 20, you know, it's difficult to actually, or like, you know, let him tap himself below 20. Yeah. It's really difficult to get those Moltens off in an effective manner. Whereas Strife Crow can just, you know, get these maybe, you know, this selection from the Dark Peddler isn't what you wanted to see. Um, you definitely want a PO or an abusive, in the, or even a soul fire in this situation. Because what you really want to do is just hold on, hold on, hold on, and then just burst the, the demon lock down. Because that's what the deck's built to do, right? Just survive and then kill someone with a combo. Yeah, so the more you were talking about this, I, I have to give some edge to Strife Crow because there are also great combat cards. Strife Crow has big AoEs like uh, Twisting Nether. Well, I suppose he has because that's a card people play in Reno Lock that can uh, wipe the board in, for 8 mana. Then uh, he can have a good Shadow Flame because he's abusive, he has power of overwhelming. So a, a good Shadow Flame dealing with all the giants in, in one um, big big sweep. He also has Reno Lock to come back if he needs to and life tap even more. Uh, so Life Coach will be trying to have some kind of pressure and, and pressure Strife Crow, but... Uh, as you mentioned, Strife has this big one burst and a lot of tools to not die. Yeah, and because he can clear off like the board, as you said, with cards like Twisting Nether, also there's a chance of like a Siphon Soul is a potential card that um that people can fit into Reno Lot, which can just demolish, you know, just you know, like a mountain giant that we saw from Live Coach earlier. So, you know, he definitely has a lot of answers. Uh, Strife Crow seemed to get quite excited about something there, not quite sure what, but um, as it was just a Sun Fury on Life Coach's board. But Strife uh, maybe, Crow can... Maybe the, the fact that he has it, uh, 10 cards in hand? Uh, yeah, that's that's a that's a reasonable issue. Maybe you trade in, play Coil, see what draws, and then at worst you can coin to get rid of a card. Coin tap, and then play something else. Uh, coin is actually pretty good for Torison next turn. If you want to play there and then follow up with Dr. Boom. So uh, you can keep it. Uh, if you Can you Argus this? Defend of Argus, use the mana and attack into it? Potentially. I mean, you know what? Like, maybe you, you don't care about Draxus, so you can play the use. Because if he plays Draxus, he's on 15. So then Strive Coast should just kill him. Yeah. Right? With the combo. So maybe he's just like, actually, I'll just play the use. Because by the time you get that weapon, it just shouldn't matter. And uh, that's actually a really important part that uh, Strife Crew kept, kept that coin. Uh, having Thoris on first on board 
will stop Torison from life coach, I believe, because it will be hard to follow up with a Torison if there is one Torison to uh, ticking and you can't kill it. Yeah, and also the positive for Strive Crow is the second life coach has seen that Torison, anything's possible in terms of the uh, the combo. It's like, you, you know, he, he could have just reduced, like, the Golem, the Faceless, and the Power Overwhelming. So suddenly, it's like, you you know, you're in the mindset of playing against the Druid a lot of the time, where as the turns tick on, you're becoming more and more afraid of the, uh, the combo. So you have to play around, or at least try and play around a certain amount of health pool. Do you like anything else here than Torison? Uh, like Torison hits a lot of key cards. It hit it hits uh, Doctor Boom for next turn. It hits the Dark King Golem that's uh, almost invisible on the left. Power overwhelming Dark Bomb. So you have a lot of damage potential uh, anyway here. And uh, Torison is not contested by the free four unless there is a Doom Guard coming out of it. Yeah. Um, hmm. The thing is, what he's probably thinking about is Sylvanas, because the Void Caller, if that pulls Malganis, then you don't really have a good answer. Um, whereas this now makes the Void Caller really awkward, because Life Coach, um, the Death Rattle and the Void Caller will um, proc before the Death Rattle on Sylvanas. He has a silence, though. So that's uh, an option for that's true. Life Coach. And if he uses an Owl, he can also fall up with Defender Vargas and um, kill the free two if he chooses to. The problem is, like, you might actually want to attack with the Void Caller and and kill it, not to get it silenced. I'm not I'm not sure if you really want to have Jaraxxus on board at the moment versus uh, Rina Lock or Doomguard on another Void Caller. Yeah, I mean, there is a crazy play. Of, it's, I don't think it's a fantastic one, but if you Owl the 5-5, five, five, attack the 3-2 with the Void Caller and then Mortal Coil um, to then draw out another Demon, potentially the Doomguard, to then kill off the Sylvanas. I think that's actually very viable. I like it. Because I, I really wanted to have my coil this turn somehow. But you can also play Is he going a for it? coil. That's uh, really solid. Yeah, I mean, that's still reasonable because then uh, Sylvanas doesn't. Well, one, yeah, you can kill the Void Caller, but you get, you know, you have to then deal with whatever demon comes out. But now that Strifegro's trying to big game Hunter, he's probably got to be thinking if Malganis comes out. Well, I just kill it. So now he's like, hmm, how worth is, is you know, like trying to deal with this? Although he's got no real choice, because if he owls one, well, he has to deal with the other one. Yeah, that's true. So do you coil one and see what's up? What will happen with it and a card? Or do you, do you want that Taurus on this turn? Mm. Now, it's, uh, I... now we know it's going, going to die. I think Coiling One seems okay because then you know Sylvanas with some of your other cards will kill anything that comes out that you care about. If Draxus comes out, you can ignore it as the Reno Lock until it gets taunted. If it doesn't come out something bigger, well you have Dark Bomb, you have Power Overwhelming, which you know you do want to combo with, but if you you know removing Malganis is a very real issue. You need to deal with the Sterino. It looks like Strafko is just pushing face though, because he does have Arcane Golem. Power overwhelming and dark bomb, so that's still a reasonable sum of burst, actually. Yeah, let's. If I if I'm looking at Strife Cross hand, I'm counting five plus uh, seven, twelve points of damage, uh, with Defender of Argus buffing the the golem as well. So yeah. it's really really good for now. And the good thing as well is Strife Cross sitting on an owl, so if something big gets taunted, it's a one mana silence. You know that. So that's probably not going to be too much of a threat. If we see double taunt, then he has to do something and kill it. But he he's also got two five fives on the board, right? So you know he's still got a pretty reasonable board in itself. Yeah, but then Life Coach has this amazing turn where he can get both Jaraxes and Doomguard from his hand, um, and then just play Defender of Argus. Like even yeah, now, play Defender insane. of Argus. And then attack with the Void Caller into Sylvanas, and then coil Sylvanas to get rid of her. He ends up with only one taunt, so I'm not sure if that's the best, but that's absolutely an option if you want to go for value. Yeah, kind of interesting that he does go for the Argus. It's hard not to Argus up the Draxus here, so you are right. He's going to trade, get the Doom Guard on board, and this is like shows the power of Void Caller. You've just used two minions to trade. Summoned a 3.15 and a 5.7 with no negative cost from your hand. It's pretty reasonable, I guess. It is, but he's almost <laughs> almost dead. That's so crazy, actually, right? Uh, with the silence, Thrycro has 11 
Um, 12, 12 damage. Will he will he actually fit the uh, defender Vargas as well into that? It's five, uh, six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is he is he one off? Two two off, I think. Oh, is it twelve with the Argus? Okay. Yeah. Um. Wow. <laughs> but then you look at Life Coach's hand, and it's suddenly double molten heal bot. <laughs> it's like okay. Uh, it's kind of rough. This this match could really go either way at this point. That was really close. If that would be faceless, was that it? Not really. No, not enough. If that would be Hellfire, would that, was that it with the Hellfire? That would be free. No, th there is not enough mana to win with the Hellfire. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the one mana from the hour. Yeah, always, always one off. Um, Doctor Boom Pass, or uh, I think it's the overall safest option. Um. Okay, he's silencing it now to limit the amount of, of health and... Uh, and he's freeing up mana next turn, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because he still wants to use two at least, so he will, ha he will want to have six. And the, like, if he gets faceless next turn... He wants yeah, it to fits to... perfectly with the mana, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now Life Coach has to navigate this, and with no taunt givers, this could be a bit of a rough one, actually. Yeah, it really depends on the bombs, and... Um... Even if he heals with Healbot, if Strifecore gets faced as Manipulator, he will have 16 plus 3, 19 points of damage. So it will be really tough. Two damage to face uh, makes a difference. The only benefit, though, is with the damage to face, it means he can play uh, or potentially tap double Molten and still play the uh, the heal bot and then just hope you know he can deal with it enough damage and not die the following turn because other than a twisting nether two Moltens plus this board is going to cause some major issue for Strive Crew. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Alright, Strive Crew still has 12 damage in hand. Is Life Coach going to play around this? Because now it's either heal bot or Moltens. Oh, and he's tapping. Oh, That's man. just game, right? He's just he's just dead, right yeah. here. And Strifecore is like, why would you? Okay, I I I, I guess yeah, I take this I, win. Yeah, I, <laughs> if you really want me to kill you, then yeah, I suppose so. That's fine. And uh, as you see the uh, arcane golem down, it's not too often you see this card and then not die that turn uh, against Reno Lock. So um, yeah, some some burst there from Strive Crow and a uh, life coach goes down two one so far. Yeah, but on the other hand, you cannot blame life coach. You hope that your opponent has standard cards. And it, when you play versus Reno Lock, like how many times do you really think there is a combo? And like it's not even a combo. So Strive Crow uh, had three pieces uh, that deal damage. If that would be let's say Arcane Golem with Faceless, that's that's not enough. That's eight, right? If it's uh, if it's Arcane Golem plus PO, it's not enough. If it's um, well, Hellfire Arc like he needed to have three cards specifically to be able to kill Life Coach on that specific turn. Yeah, and I think one of the problems is if he played Healbot instead, then um, yeah, okay, you know you, you're on 18 or whatever he would have been on, but then he doesn't set up Lethal next turn. So whereas you put two Molten Giants down, it's like next turn I'm going to kill you unless you clear the board. So you know there's valid lines of play from Life Coach, but you know. Strifeco had, had the answers there, and he had them for a long time, that little burst combo. Yeah, I feel like Life Coach, um, I, I, it's, it's happening kind of like the second time Life Coach is uh, making a bit of a greedy play. Um, it's, it's really hard to say which which play is a, a bit better, but I'm sure Life Coach will explain in detail why, why he made that decision. Yeah, and just to go over quickly, because I don't know if we've mentioned it, the overall class lineups for these guys. Life Coach is on Warlock, Druid, and Rogue, and Strive Crow is on Druid, Warlock, and Paladin. So, I mean, just looking at these overall, a lot of Druid and Warlock from the players from the whole tournament so far. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and some Warriors as well. We've seen Shaman at one moment. Yeah, that was Hoy, right? Uh, I think... Yeah, Hoy was playing Shaman. Was Dog playing Shaman as well? I think Dog was also playing. Oh yeah, Shaman. I think he was. Yeah, but they both but got over... eliminated. So Shaman. Uh... <laughs> so Shaman's bad, right? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so um, yeah, but you know, I think the the it's interesting to see the differences in that. I think Warlock is picked a lot because it's very flexible and hard to deal with, and the archetypes are very different. And then Druid is just solid as a rock in terms of deck. So, like, you know, it's really difficult for these players who are top of the game to not pick a deck that's one of the most consistent decks in the game at the moment, I would say. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. But you will be happy to hear that Druid is actually losing a lot with standard uh, rotation. 
good. <laughs> it's losing. It's losing shade of next Ramos. Period. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But we can all <laughs> hope that. And I was, re if I'm honest, I was really glad when I heard this. Probably more so than any other anything else. But with the standard, when Blizzard announced they were actually going back to look at the base set. Like, that was really nice to see. That they're not just like, oh, yeah, it, it, the base, that's fine. Because then decks like Druid would become very, very scary. Or scarier still. But the yeah. fact that, you know, we might go into this new standard format with a few alter, uh, altercations to the base set is really nice. I think that could be really good for the game also. Yeah, I'm really excited for the future. But uh, I'm still excited about this match specifically. Life Coach thinking if he wants to innervate Shade or coin um, Wild Grove, or maybe even pass. Sometimes you, you might want to pass this Druid on first turn to Wild Grove next, and then you have Innervate and Coin open um, for, for a different place. So decides to go for Innervate, but it's a really hard decision which uh, line of play to take versus Paladin early. But uh, definitely this matchup favors Paladin. And as Druid, you are playing from behind. What you want to do is uh, to combat the board uh, ease, um, early game to deal with whatever is being played, and then if, just forge yourself an opportunity to, to win the combo because it's not always easy. If uh, Paladin goes into Great Curve, kills everything you play, and then uh, hides behind Belchers and um, Noble Sacrifice with Mistress Challenger, you might not have an opportunity to, to, to win. Yeah, exactly. And I think the way Life Coach played that last turn was really good. He used resources, what I would say correctly, because he innovated out of the shade. One, that gives him a minion to challenge the board, which, as I said, is important. But also, it's the the best way his cards fit together. So, turn two, Wild Growth. Turn three, if he needs to, he can coin Druid of the Claw. Whereas, if he went coin Wild Growth, he would then either on turn three play the shade or innovate Druid of the Claw and then have to play the other one off curve. And then it just wouldn't slot together very well. And there's definitely something to be said for, even though it might not look like the most obvious plays, actually just making the most of your mana potential every single turn normally does get you ahead. Oh, certainly. And uh, I also want to talk about the card that Strifecore is uh, holding its hand. It's, it's divine, divine Favor. So uh, a very interesting choice for a Paladin deck where some Paladins, in Secret Paladin specifically, uh, cut it. Uh, some people play one. What do, you, what do you think about the card? Is it good? Uh, yeah, I think... Um... You know, it, it, it either works really well or it doesn't, I think. But I think in terms of a tournament setting, when you know your opponents, it can be very powerful. Because if I said to you, you can either take Divine Favor versus Life Coach, for example, or not take it. I don't know about you, but I would take it. Yeah. Because <laughs> the odds on someone playing Control Decks and Life Coach being that someone, pretty high. And Divine Favor can actually just win you games because you effectively have card draw you shouldn't have as this deck, you know, normally. Yeah, I absolutely agree there. And that True Silver Champion for Strife Core was amazing. That's one of the best cards with Druid when you play Paladin uh, to, to deal with those big creatures that they try to ramp. And it uh, deals great with uh, Druid of the Claw, as we've just seen. But uh, Strife Core is not out of the woods yet. He doesn't pressure that much, and that big shade is, uh, is a good threat. And Life Coach can... Uh, can play Keeper this turn as well, just to deal with the 2-2 and start pressuring uh, with the 5-4. If he attacks face with the 5-4, then he forces Strifecrew to attack into it with the weapon, and he will take an extra 3 damage, 8 total, and then uh, the 2-4 will still remain on board. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of pressure, and uh, as you said, the, even the 2-4 remain on board, like, if your opponent has to deal with that for the shade, they probably don't have much to do deal with the uh, keeper. And also, speaking of divine favor, life coach's hand isn't exactly big at the moment, especially since you consider he's almost certainly going to play one of those two minions that are highlighted at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, I like if you play shade, is there room for shade this turn? You shade, you hero power face. Yeah. To be fair, judging the way life coach has been playing this evening. Um, I think getting the second shade down was probably more like him because he wants that shade value now. Yeah. And still, this requires a weapon or you know some other form of like awkward removal from Strife Crow because let's be honest, we can see the juggler and the odds on the juggler coming down, killing the uh, killing the shade off with the juggles afterwards, especially because he can play another minion after, are pretty high. But if that didn't happen, if Strife Crow didn't have a juggler then suddenly Life Coach is way ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Also, there is a, a good argument to keep the Keeper in the hand. Uh, that's Tyrion Forgering that we see in the hand of Strife as well. So uh, when Tyrion is being dropped on turn 8, if you don't have a Keeper, you're in trouble. Not, not only because it's just a 6-6 with Divine Shield, Ashbringer 
that's coming back is a huge problem for the Druid. But here, Life Coach has no choice. He has to go for that Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, and this is still pretty reasonable. We can see the two falls going to get uh, destroyed by the True Silver from Strivecom, more than likely. Um, but still, okay, the, the Secret Keeper is not too bad. I think we might just see Secret Keeper Divine Favor now, because the longer you hold on, three mana for two cards, it's not getting into that, right? So it's not the end of the world. And because he had a one drop, which is one of the issues Secret Piling runs into late game, is top decking these low minions. It meant that, yeah, I probably got the mana to at least do something. It's not the end of the world to draw two cards for free mana. Like... Are you are you playing warrior mostly? I guess used to battle rage two mana draw four instead of um, a, a poor mage deck. No, I'm just used to divine favoring when my opponent's got nine cards in hand. Oh yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Harrison in a doom hammer, for example. That's, uh, do you not do that all the time? Then the, the value. Well, I do it from uh, from time to time, but uh, that's a good deal, I think. Two cards for free mana. It, it yeah. feels okay. And this is a tough choice for Strive Crow, which is why he's taking a lot of his time. Mini bot, fantastic. Probably the one of, if not the best two drop in the game. But getting the almost guaranteed value off Revenge whilst also buffing a Secret Keeper wins out here. Um, he can still play the mini bot next turn and still have five mana knocking around for something else, maybe low fab or something. But uh, I do agree and like the Secret choice because it makes removal of these minions so much more awkward for Life Coach. Yeah, absolutely. But then Life Coach is playing Dr. Boom, so he can wait. He doesn't have Yeah, to whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's he's like, like, okay. Do what you want, boom. Pass. <laughs> uh, he might consider attacking the Shade, but I think uh, keeping Shade in the hand at the moment is, uh, is a bit better. You will not fight versus minions that much. And uh, if you attack to the Secret Keeper and if there's a Venge, you bring a bit more power to the board. And even if there there is a... A secret being played next turn. That secret keeper will not be that big. You still, you still are ahead with that Doctor Boom. Yeah, I think Live Coach is weighing up the uh, the risk reward of the Noble Sacrifice as well. <laughs> just Noble Sacrifice, and he attacks him with the Shade, and he just gets blown out pretty hard. Um, as you know, it can then be cleaned up relatively easy by Strive Coat, and the Secret Keeper lives. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But whenever he decides or uh, to attack or not, I don't think that it's, uh, it's really clear um, what's, the, what's the best decision there. And Strife Crow picks only Noble Sacrifice, so a very weak turn from his side. Yeah, and this is when Secret piled in whips. I mean, we can see that Tyrion's there for turn 8, so you know we know that's coming. But if you imagine Tyrion was any other card in the deck um, that isn't Mysterious Challenger... Um, suddenly, you know, top deck in a 1-mana secret on 7-mana when, you you, when you're effectively floating 5... Uh, up until that draw is kind of rough. It is. So, like, a lot a, a lot of people remember the perfect curve from Paladins uh, when it happens because this is something you really remember, right? Those are m memorable moments when you, when you get stomped. But they rarely remember that sometimes Paladin just does nothing. He just stares at you and be like, hey, I have my light and that's it. That's what I have. Yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah, a little bit rough. And this happens more often than people will probably say. Like like you said, a lot of people just remember the bad times against Mysterious Challenger, but uh, but when you see it sort of, you know, you see the Paladin just play like a Creeper on turn 8, Creeper Hero Power Pass with no cards in hand. That does happen. Yeah, it does. And now um, the bombs <laughs> didn't kill the Secret Keeper. But still, Life Coach in a good position and... and... Mostly because he doesn't have to fear being bursted down. Uh, he can slam whatever minion he feels like. He doesn't have lethal yet, especially because there's Noble Sacrifice. But uh, he can just slam Mention of Lore. And, or even just go for the trade. So, like, because he got Wrath and he has Force of Nature, if he wants to do a really life coach play, he might go for a clear. Like, something almost like a clear. Yeah, I mean, he could actually Wrath for one, see what he draws. Yeah. And then, uh, What's then either... Rock, right? Yeah, see what this, how the secrets proc, and then go force it, and then go force nature to clear up. Yeah, this way is fine as well because this way I suppose he gets to proc divine, uh, sorry, noble sacrifice, and see what you know how that works, um, and then follow up with a bigger wrath if need be, you know, on something that gains the advantage because there are a lot of one half minions here. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fine, and th th that's especially good because Paladin is out of cards. So the best card you expect on next turn is Tyrion. And if you have two big minions, you can deal with Tyrion. Like, even take that damage, um, shapeshift into Tyrion, kill it with Dr. Boom, and go the shade to face if Tyrion is the only uh, minion on board. But yeah, pressuring, always nice. Yeah, and getting that use out of the shade as well, really big, and something that uh, oh, a lot of... Uh... Wrath? 
What is happening? No, no Raph. Okay. Did he? Did what did he miss? No, I think it's fine. He looked very upset for a second. Then, did yeah. he attack with the boom? Uh, he did. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what he missed then. Face. That's why. That's why Strife goes at thirteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Getting thrown off by Life Coach's reactions. <laughs> um, but but yeah, getting the value from the shade that she attacking is something that a lot of uh, maybe lesser experienced players don't do. Like uh, I think a lot of Drew players get locked into the thought of. The shade's just gonna keep growing, and then I'll combo him for a million, you know, like, and that's it. And it's like, no, you actually kind of want to attack with the shade because you're missing out on potential uh, additional damage. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And now Strifecore decides how to attack and what to play. Uh, if he goes five four into the five five, um, he can play Tyrion, and then Tyrion is uncontested by Boom, and um, Haunted Creeper survives. So whatever happens. Then, if Boom goes into Tyrion, then Hunt the Creeper can cl make a cleanup and uh, and kill the Goblin, and you still have the Ashbringer, and you stop Druin from advancing. If there is a silence, you are still alive anyway. Yeah, and this is the best way to uh, survive combo, isn't it as well? Yeah, absolutely. I I'm just if, thinking. I think if combo came down with just Mysterious Challenger, then you'd lose anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is the only way he survives combo. I think. Um, or maybe he doesn't survive combo actually. Okay. Oh no, he doesn't. There's, if there's a combo, you can attack uh, into the shield with the hero, and then there's only twelve. So. Yeah, I don't think he'd survive it because the boom would hit for a nine. Would yeah, it? yeah, and then that one of the sh um, of the trends. But it doesn't matter. There is no combo. Uh, there is an of lore though, and you can heal Doctor Boom after attacking, or you can heal yourself to not die. And uh, well, it, do you even kill Tyrion here? Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Because the thing is, Tyrion can then kill the 5-5, five five, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I suppose you do that, and then if your opponent wants to... If Strife Girl wants to run in the weapon to the 5-5, five five, then Life Coach is probably okay with that at this moment in time. That Master for Battle is so trollish, Raven. So trollish. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> Clearly you play Master Challenger here. <laughs> But this is genuinely one of the issues, like, the late game draws from Paladin are normally so bad, unless you've not drawn any late game in which you're probably in a bad position anyway. The, the, the fun fact is, Strife Crew is actually in a good position. He doesn't know it yet, but Life Coach doesn't have any spells and uh, no possible burst. So Strife Crew goes for uh, killing the 5-5, five five, killing Dr. Boom, establishing Mysterious Challenger. Uh, he's he ha he's in a good position. Like he might even get adventurous and go five to face uh, and play the mischievous challenger. I don't know what's what's better though. Like he will have minions and mischievous challenger. That has to be good. I don't know how many secrets he has left. Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely awkward. Um, <laughs> so rough though, because like you said, Strike Crow's in a mindset of where like. Yeah, my opponent's probably just got stuff now. I'm only on eight health, but life coach doesn't have anything directly impactful yet. Yeah, life coach. Uh, uh, oh die wow, here. living roots. He can actually just die here. So if there is competitive spirit. There is seven plus at least uh, three more, uh, six more. So that's thirteen. That's uh, basically eighteen damage. So he has to attack with his hero power. Hope the avenge goes onto the six six and then BGH right. Yeah. Is that the only reasonable way to come out of this? Because I don't think as your Drake swipe does that do in yeah, I suppose that would do enough. We have all four secrets, right? So uh, basically we have Noble Sacrifice, Avenge, Competitive Spirit and Redemption. Yeah, I think so. Or or have we seen double Noble Sacrifice already or double Revenge? I, I think we've seen one Avenge and one Noble Sacrifice. So yeah, with that, with that, that's a really bad spot. And uh, if Strife could win this game, uh, he will win the match. So let's see if Avenge lands on that Mistress Challenger. He needs to lock it in quick because the animations are going to... Uh, I guess he just hovers the BGH over to see if he can do it. He's <laughs> just trying to read Life Coach's expressions here. No. Nope. Did this happen? No, it didn't. Uh, so how much damage? Uh, Life Coach that's already just con lethal, right? He conceded already. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say that's already game. Wow, what a what a series! Yeah, that was quite uh, interesting, especially because it seemed that Strife Crew is not drawing into much. Uh, we we remember that turn seven and turn six uh, without uh, much pressure, but in the end, Tyrion on eight and Mistress Challenger on nine. 
So, Raven, is this one of the games that we'll, we will remember as one of those games versus Mysterious Challenger deck? Uh, <laughs> potentially, yeah, potentially. Especially when the uh, the turn was dealt with, so then the weapon's just doing so much extra damage. It's pretty insane, but I think more of those sets where it's Live Coach versus Strive Crow is definitely going to be memorable either way. All right, so who's playing next? We have uh, the winner's bracket. So Strive Crow won versus Life Coach. He's got he's advancing to the winner's bracket. And then uh, the last game was Show. So Strive Crow versus Show coming up next. And after that, we'll see um, Orange versus Life Coach. And then one more match will be the winner's match of uh, Orange versus Life Coach uh, and uh, versus loser of uh, Strive Crow versus Show. So three more matches for you guys today. A lot more Hearthstone. Stay tuned. It's Nimshin Raven. See you in a moment.